welcome to Aaron's Hobbies Presents. Today's edition is going to be a math edition. So I've had um, several questions about how I do math. And the first question, before I get into stations, the first question was, um, how do I address counting and adding with my kids? Um, do I use our fingers? Do we use manipulatives? Do we do it just in our head? Do we use markers? The answer is all of the above. My theory on math is that I need to give my kids as many tools as possible to allow them to do mental math or to use manipulative. So the first thing that I do is I teach them to do it with their head. So if I told them three plus two, we, we learn to go three plus two, and then we count three, four, five. Or if it's takeaway, three, and then they take it back, two, one. So that's one way that I do that. I teach them how to use tally marks and then erase or add more tally marks. We use manipulatives where they're having to count on or take away. I don't really subscribe to one firm idea. I just kind of use what works best for the class at the year. You kind of have to be flexible and figure out, are they hands-on, are they mental mathers, are they using their fingers, and just give them as many tools as you can. All right, now on to the most important part. For me, math is all about hands-on. The more that you can give them to touch and feel and do and manipulate, the better that they're going to understand that math later on down the road. So what we do is we have stations and each station is a two person station. So I'm just gonna run through these really quick just to give you guys some ideas of what we're doing right now. So in this station right here, it is a threading station. So this works great for hand and eye coordination and their little fingers. So they have to thread these onto a string. Now, to make this more challenging, what I've done is I have given them number cards and so if they were to put on the number two, then they have to match that number two with two manipulatives. One, two. And they thread that on. And so they would build on their string, two, five, seven, six. So as I walk around, I can just look at their string and see if they've done the job that they're supposed to. All right, so before I get into this next station, I wanna give another teacher tip. Okay, if you go to the Dollar Tree or the Dollar Store and you buy these little um, containers, the Tupperware containers, and you put a foam dice inside, it doesn't make a lot of noise. And so when the kids roll the dice, they shake it and they drop it and they can see the dice inside. You don't have to worry about dice going everywhere. All right, so this station is called Roll the City. And what it is, is I sit on one side, or my partner sits on the other side, I roll four. I build one, two, three, four. There's one of my city. Then the kid builds his city. I build, he builds, I build, he builds. And at the end, we have a little spinner that we spin, and either the winner is the person who has more, the tallest city, or the person who has less. Next station is about learning what number comes next or before. So on here, we've got some popsicle sticks that we've written two, blank, four, five, six and then they need to find the clip that goes with it and put it on there. So now it's two, three, four, five, six. So it's about finding the missing number. Next station is one of my kids' favorite stations. And so all you gotta do is you go to the party store and you buy ketchup uh, containers of these little mini cups and just write different numbers in them, okay? You also need to go buy the beaded necklaces. And what you do is you cut them into groups. So all of my red beaded necklaces I cut into groups of 10. All my oranges I cut in the groups of five. My yellows I cut in groups of three. My green, my blues I cut in groups of two. And then my greens are ones. And so what they have to do is if they pull the cup seven, they have to figure out what combinations make seven. So I could put in there five and two more, or they could build it with three, three, and one more. So this is teaching them the combinations to build numbers. Next station is called Domino Parking Lot. And what it is is I just made a little parking lot that has all the numbers zero through 12. And so what they have to do is pull a domino. This is one and zero. I know that makes one. This domino is six plus three more. So that will go six, seven, eight, nine, and they park it on number nine. And then the winner is the person who can park all their dominoes first. All right, so next station is a chain station. And what we've done is we've given them math problems. So two plus eight equals 10. And what you do is you have to build two of one color on one side, eight on the other side of a different color. So I have two on one side and then eight of a different color on the other side. And then I tell them you have to combine to make your equal. So two plus eight. So we combine those and then we change it over equals 10. And then to make this harder, once they get good at the station, we have more cards where the equal sign has a blank and they have to use a whiteboard marker to write the answer. My other chain station is for kids who are not quite ready for the addition and subtraction problems. So this is just sequencing. So they would build four, then they would build five, then they would build six. 
or you can pull another card, build one, build two, build three, and they just hang the chains. All right, so next station. Inside of here, they have a little addition problem. This says three plus one, and so they set this down, and they have to build three plus one. So three of one color plus one of another color, and then they put it in front of it equals two, three. Okay, next station's called build a tower. So I have a little paper that looks like this. So it's got one, two, three, four, five, six. And in here they have a dice. They roll the dice. If it says six, they build six on this stack right here. And then their partner goes. Then it's my turn. I roll. If it says three, I build my tower of three. And the winner who is the one who can build all of their towers on their page. Okay, this is another station. This is a station that's a variation of the build the tower. Same idea, except it looks like this. And what you do, same idea, you roll it four. So I get four. One, two, three, four. And I put it with the number four. And the winner is the person who can get one, two, three, four, five, six. And I teach them if they roll it and they get four again, they go, oh well, because they don't get to build four again. If you want to make this station harder, what you do is you put two dice in this and make the dice zero, one, two, three, four, five. And then the combination of the two, you can build all the way up to 10. All right, so here's another domino. And these giant dominoes you can get from the Dollar Tree. And so what they do is they have a piece of paper that they record on that looks like this. And what they do is they take a domino for example, this one says four and two. So they're going to draw their domino four and two. And then they're going to write four and two more equals six. Okay. Then we've got some bag stations. And usually these bag stations go along with what activity I'm teaching this week. So I've just finished my 2D shapes. And so this bag is just a simple sort. I've got giant shapes and they have to sort different items that like houses and crutches and TVs. And they sort those into the shapes giant deck of cards. These are worth their weight in gold. Also get these at the Dollar Tree and I've taught them how to play war. So I take the face cards out and we just, sh I show them how to get half the deck and then they flip it over one, two, three, war. And whoever has the largest number. So we're working on number sequencing and uh, greater than or less than. All right. So we've also taught measurement. And so this station, I have laminated one of the recording sheets that we've done as a group. And then what they need to do is they pull something and then they use Unifix cubes to measure the width or the height of something, and then they record it on their recording sheet. All right, and this is one of my favorite stations. So you can build these with just beads and Chanel sticks or pipe cleaners. And what it is, is you make a circle. And so this one says number six, and there are six beads. And so what they have to do is they experiment with six can be six and zero, or they move one over. Six can be five and one more. Move one over. Six can be four and two more. And so what I've done is after they've had opportunities to play with these and experiment, then I've added some laminating recording sheets. And so what they do is here's the number six. So they're going to draw whatever combination they built. So like four and two, and then they write four and two more equals six. All right. So that was a very fast and furious go through of what I do in my stations. If you have any questions on the things that I've just shown, post those questions down below. Or if you have any other questions about how I teach math, I'd always love your, your questions. So every time we learn something new, I'm going to put something in this station that practices that skill. And I'll take away one of the stations that I know the kids have gotten really good at. And so throughout the year, these stations are going to incrementally get harder and harder and harder. And how I do stations are free choice. The kids know there can only be two kids at each station. And if they're finished, they clean up and they choose another station. I also have iPads in stations and Osmos in stations. So we have technology. We also have hands on. And then my student teacher and I, we walk around the room and we work with kids who are, we can tell are struggling with um, counting one to one, addition, whatever that skill is that we're working on. I'll go and play that game with the kids so that I can scaffold the, the skills that I want them to have. All right. Well, that's all I've got for this edition of Aaron's Hobbies Presents. Thanks for tuning in. And remember, post those questions down below.